New England governors want to waive the Jones Act to bring in American liquefied natural gas. We better call Sal. Hi, I'm the aforementioned Sal Mercogliano. Welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. So the issue of transporting American liquefied natural gas is something we see happen quite a bit, particularly around the winter time every year. But it came to the forefront this past weekend when Governor Chris Sununu, who just won re-election to be governor for New Hampshire for another term, went on CBS Face the Nation and talked about specifically waiving the Jones Act. Now, the Jones Act is the Merchant Marine Act of 1920. It's the entire act. But specifically, what he's referring to is Section 27, which says to move U.S. cargo from one U.S. port to another U.S. port, you got to meet four criteria. The ship has to be U.S. flagged. It has to have a U.S. crew. It has to be U.S. owned, and it has to be U.S. built. And currently in the U.S. Merchant Marine, there are no ships that meet that criteria that can transport liquefied natural gas. We built liquefied natural gas tankers back in the 70s and 80s, but the need went away, and so did the tankers. And right now, almost all liquefied natural gas tankers are flagged overseas and built overseas. So no ships qualify to move American liquefied natural gas from the Gulf Coast of the United States up into New England, which needs it principally during the winter time. And what we're going to do today is look at what Governor Sununu said, look at the background of the issue, what's causing this, and amazingly, I'm going to talk about an option that alleviates and solves the problem and maybe makes everybody happy. No, it won't make everybody happy because no one will be happy when we talk about the Jones Act. But that's just the nature. I'm going to throw it out there. I'm going to try to bring you a solution because that's what I do. All right, before we get started, if you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos. All right, better call Sal. Here's the story that appeared on G Captain. This is Mike Scholler, New Hampshire governor slammed for Jones Act comments on Face the Nation. So both sides of the Jones Act are coming out in force. There's a quote in this story here from the American Maritime Partnership which basically slams Governor Sununu for basically attacking the Jones Act. Uh, Kuo Kaku Park, who is the president of AMP, has a statement in here. Cato, who wants to repeal the Jones Act, came out in favor of what Governor Sununu said. And both sides are screaming from the mountaintop about their implacable positions and they won't come from it. I, however, am going to come up with a middle-of-the-road solution that, again, will make nobody happy, but I think is the solution that we need. So first off, let's go to Governor Sununu and hear what he specifically had to say about this issue. Top of mind, New England is facing its highest energy costs in more than 25 years. Could be a cold winter. Um, your largest utility in the region is asking the White House to prepare emergency measures to prevent a natural gas shortage this winter. Um, what What's the federal response been so far and are you at the state level prepared for for what could be a safety threat yeah i'll say the federal response so far has has been uh very underwhelming um all the governors got on the phone recently about a month ago with the secretary of energy and tried to talk about what those opportunities were in terms of increasing natural gas new england is really at the end of the line for natural gas right all of our natural gas comes through albany and in previous years, if there was a high demand or a big cold snap, folks come home, they turn their heat on, the Marcella Shell would increase production. But no one's incentivized to do that. There's no, no uh, opportunity to do that right now. And I think that's where a lot of the utilities, and rightly so, are telling this administration, you've put policies in place. It's having a, a very drastic effect on energy and fuel oil prices today and likely is just going to get worse. So we need to see something across New England. There's nothing political about energy prices, right? But when you have all the ability in the world to produce your own fuels and refuse to do it, obviously folks in New England are quite frustrated. Well, there, there's record production right now, um, as you know. Uh, but this is a very yeah, real and problem. Yes, and because of the Jones Act, because of the, and because of the Jones Act, that is this antiquated hundred hundred year old uh, union driven policy that President Biden refuses to get rid of. We have very minimal opportunity to bring natural gas from even parts of our own country and land it right here uh, in in New England. So it's not just New Hampshire; it's Massachusetts, it's Maine, it's all of these states that are that are feeling record high prices. So I'm going to highlight two issues I have with both the commentator and Governor Sununu. 
on this. So commentator Margaret Brennan talked about the fact, well, you know, LNG, uh, natural gas production is at record height. It is. If you look at the United States, we've become the largest exporter of liquefied natural gas. Natural gas production is at the highest level it's ever been in. However, to get that natural gas to New England is close to impossible because where natural gas is being produced in the central part of the United States, there is no pipeline that goes there because the state of New York refuses to allow a pipeline to go under the Hudson up into New England. The pipeline that does exist comes from upstate New York, the Marcellus Shale area, but doesn't have enough production to supply natural gas to New England. Now, Governor Sununu at the same time gives the old trope that the Jones Act is a union issue. It's not. Are there union jobs involved with, with ocean shipping? Sure there are, but there are plenty of non-union jobs involved in co coastal shipping, on the rivers, on the inland waterways. And by the way, a 102-year-old law, you know, the interstate commerce law is passed back in 1887. The, you know, the uh, Food and Drug Administration uh, law was passed back in the early 1900s. You know, just because a law is old doesn't mean it's bad. The Constitution is kind of old. It's still pretty good. You know, the issue here is how do you reform and make change? So the governor talked about getting on a phone with Secretary of Energy Granholm and talking to her about this issue. But before that, back in July, the six governors of New England wrote this letter. I'll have it in the show notes so you can take a look at it on the issue. And they're worried about, obviously, the supply of natural gas to New England, and particularly because of the situation with natural gas in the world, principally because of the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the cutoff of natural gas heading to Europe. This has caused a huge increase in demand for natural gas, which means the U.S. has been shipping large quantities of liquefied natural gas. Just did a story the other day about the parking lot of LNG carriers sitting off Europe waiting to offload because there's not enough facilities ashore to take that natural gas. At the same time, China has increased its purchase of natural gas. And there's a big concern that New England will not get the natural gas it needs. And there's a specific paragraph here, right? here where they talk about it. We appreciate that the Biden administration has been working with European allies to expand fuel exports to Europe. A similar effort should be made for New England. The Jones Act, which restricts the type of ships that may transport products between U.S. ports, effectively precludes all U.S. exported LNG from being delivered into New England. That letter from the six governors was backed by this letter from ISO New England Corporation that handles energy in New England. They backed up what the governor said about the need for energy in the area, particularly natural gas. The question here is what is the right solution to overcome the shortage? Should it be a waiver of the Jones Act and open up New England for foreign LNG tankers coming in? Well, let's look at what the needs are specifically for New England first. So I'm a guy who loves data and facts. I'm a historian, is what I do. I got fun, made fun of the other day on some of my comments about being a data guy. So here's the data from EIA, the Energy Information Agency. This is from their end of year report for 2021. I didn't get the most recent one. I went for their uh, actually January 2022 report, which had all the data in it for the previous year, because I want to get a snapshot of what was the energy needs for liquefied natural gas for New England in 2021. And here it is. This is uh, from it. I'll have it in the show notes. You can take a look at it. But I want to show exactly how much liquefied natural gas we're talking about. How frequently do we need liquefied natural gas tankers to come into Everett, Massachusetts to offload? And what you see here is a excellent snapshot of it. So this is for long-term vessels. And one of the things you note here are the dates of arrival. January 9th, January 23rd, February 8th, February 24th, March 13th. So in the winter months of 2021, you're seeing an LNG vessel come in about every two weeks, coming in and offloading. When you hit the summer months, May 15th, July 7th, August, uh, September 16th, about every two months, you see a vessel coming in. And then starting in November, you hit that monthly cycle. Number one, this is all coming out of Trinidad. This is where it's coming from. Trinidad is about a wash in distance. It's about the same distance from Houston to Boston as Trinidad to Boston. It's about a five day, five and a half day sail. 
So it uh, doesn't matter if it comes out of Houston, comes out of Trinidad, it's about the same uh, sailing cost, which is really important because you got to remember too, you're paying to transport natural gas in a liquid state on board a ship. Understand the easiest solution to solve this problem is to build a pipeline, another pipeline into New England from the shale fields in the central part of the United States. The problem is the state of New York will not allow a second pipeline to cross under the Hudson into New England. And I, you know, the reason for it is 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 it's the state of New York. I don't know what the reason is. I, I think it had a lot to do with Tom Brady and the and the Patriots from years ago, or from the Red Sox. I'm not sure, but they won't let it happen. And understand, that's the cheapest way to get natural gas. That's the thing that solves everything. Because when you have to ship it by ship, you have to liquefy it, which means you have to cool it. And I say cool it. Get it down to 260 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. And then you have to load it on a ship. You have to sail it, which, by the way, the charter rates for an LNG carrier right now are about a half a million dollars a day. So, you know, you're sailing six days from Houston or Trinidad to Boston, and plus you have to offload it. Uh, you're talking about a half a million every day on top of the cost for the liquefied natural gas. So that's an expensive way of doing it. Then when it arrives in Everett, you have to take the liquefied natural gas and turn it back into a gas. So you got to turn it from its liquid state, you have to regasify it, and then you have to hold it. And one of the things to note here is number one, look at the ships. There are really just a few ships that did this transport in 2021, the Iberica Knudsen, the Cantalina Spirit, the Methane Linden Valley, uh, and then uh, the Cadiz Knudsen. That's it. There's only a few ships. And understand, you know, some of these ships did it back to back. So if you look at the January, February runs, it's done by one ship. The February, March runs, done by one ship. And then if you look at the cargo on here, two, you know, 2.9 million uh, uh, cubic feet delivered 2.3 2.8 2.8 then down to 1.4 1.6 grand total here of about 21 million cubic feet of liquefied natural gas comes in understand this is less than a shipload you know they're only offloading about half to a third of a cargo there so we're, we're not talking about a blanket waiver for all lng carriers to operate we're talking about one ship could do this could handle all the LNG going into Everett, Massachusetts. Now, I'm, I already know people are screaming, what about us in Puerto Rico? What about Puerto Rico? We import LNG. Yes, you do. And understand, too, that if you look at the value or the amount of LNG that comes in, it's really small, too. It's less than this that comes in on a ship voyage. And we're going to talk about why that is. And the difference in Puerto Rico is Trinidad is a hell of a lot closer to Puerto Rico than Houston, Texas is. And when it comes to that ship voyage, it's still going to be cheaper to get LNG into Puerto Rico from Trinidad than it's going to be from other places. Now, I know that there is a percentage of cargo that comes into Puerto Rico from other places. What we're talking about is one LNG carrier dropping off half to a third of a load every couple of weeks in the wintertime and then every couple of months in the summertime. So let's look at the fuel consumption in New England. So this is the EIA, the Energy Information Agency, which is under the Department of Energy. So one of the things I want to show you right now is you just heard Governor Sununu talking about the fact that, listen, we need more fuel. The pipeline capacity into New England right now is not at max capacity. They're flowing at two thirds, 64.4%. Here's the pipeline map. Here's that shale. Uh, they're getting, again, coming out of the Marcellus fields. This field is not producing, according to Governor Sununu, at capacity. That is backed up here by the pipeline capacity being at 64.4%. So obviously one of the issues here is, is, okay, push up capacity, push up production. But the other issue here is storage capacity. This is the issue that's really at play in New England. When you have one third capacity in the pipeline, if you can get Marcellus to increase their production, you still need a place to store that natural gas. And understand pipeline is the way to go. It's the cheap, you don't have to liquefy it, you don't have to super cool it, you don't have to regasify it, you don't have to put it on a ship and pay a half a million dollars per day to sail it. The pipeline is the way to go. But when you start looking at the data here, let's look at where the consumption is. 
So this is from the same report here from the New England dashboard. This is where consumption is. And notice how consumption increases during the winter time. So when it comes to electrical power, electrical power pretty standard through here, except when you hit it into the summertime, when all of a sudden you're hitting AC units in uh, a lot of production areas. At industrial, you see it goes up just a little bit, but the big area where you see it is in residential. Take everything out but residential. Most homes up in New England have gas tanks. Uh, used to be oil gas tanks. You would have oil trucks come, deliver it to your house, fill up your oil tank, and that's what you run your heaters, your furnaces off of. Now it's get natural gas. And when you have a spike here in the winter time, this is when the pipeline can't handle it. Your storage capacity can't handle it. So they have to supplement it by bringing in the liquefied natural gas tankers. This chart same source shows you the daily delivers, deliveries of liquefied natural gas in New England. And this is 2021, 2022. Look at where it's delivered. It's delivered right here in the peak of winter time. So obviously we're coming into a period of time where we're gonna need liquefied natural gas, but New England's in a problem. Even if you waive the Jones Act and you let foreign tankers in, you're competing against Europe. You're competing against Asia for this natural gas. It's going to be a ridiculously expensive proposition to get natural gas by liquefied natural gas tankers into this area because what's going to happen is energy traders and the foreign shipping firms are going to go to where the highest price is. Wherever they can sell that cargo for the max amount of price is where they're going to go. They don't care if New England freezes their Red Sox off. What they care about is where are they going to get the most money because again they're not american companies they're not american ships they're going to go to wherever the corporations that run them want them to go all right i've talked about this what's the solution to this so what the those who oppose the jones act want what governor sununu said is we want a waiver we want a waiver that allows foreign lng tankers in to operate to deliver lng from the united states in the area does that solve the problem? Yes and no. Yes, in that, yeah, you'll get LNG, there's a lot more flexibility, and you can bring American LNG into New England. Does it solve the problem? No, because the problem is you're competing on a worldwide basis, and you're talking about really expensive cost to do that, because again, you're at the mercy of foreign shippers and foreign companies to do that. My solution, which is going to make nobody happy, which is, again, what I love to do, is make nobody happy, just ask my wife, uh, is come up with a solution that does a little bit of both. So we built LNG tankers back in the 70s and 80s, built 16 of them. We did it under a program called the Construction Differential Subsidies under the Merchant Marine Act of 1936. And that act provided anywhere from 14% to 26% of the value of the vessel provided by the U.S. government to offset the higher construction costs associated with building in the United States, because unlike China and Korea, which absolutely subsidizes their shipbuilding, and Japan, which does this weird ownership agreement in the building of their vessels, the U.S. is having a hard time compete in building against them. You'll hear people compare it all the time, and it's an apples and oranges comparison. It's actually an apples to watermelon comparison. What we need to do is twofold. One, already showed you, we can get one ship in that can handle Boston, ever it can. That same ship too, by the way, can go down to Puerto Rico and dump a load down in Puerto Rico and supplement Puerto Rico's LNG as needed. So instead of just waving a foreign ship and bring it in, how about this? How about a five-year waiver? Five-year waiver. Sal, are you mad? Are you drunk? No, not drunk. No. Five-year waiver, a five-year waiver that brings a foreign flag vessel into the U.S. fleet. That's right. Let's bring it in. Let's reflag it, put the old stars and stripes on it. Let's put an American crew on board. Let's put it under an American operating company, and let's operate it. Let's use it to provide that necessary fuel to Boston, to Everett, and down to Puerto Rico. The U.S. government could bring that vessel in, lease it to a commercial firm, and allow that vessel to be operated, and it can go international as needed as long as Americans are covered in their LNG requirements. At the same time as we do that, we place a small, 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 tiny surcharge 
on every million cubic feet of cargo of, of LNG we're shipping out of the United States and we take that revenue, put it into a corpus, a body of money that we use so that we can restart building LNG tankers in the United States. We built them in the 1970s and 80s. We built the first LNG carrier, the Methane Pioneer, back in 1959. We can do it again. We just have to get back in the process of doing that. We are the largest exporter of LNG in the world. Qatar and Australia are second and third. Qatar has a massive fleet of LNG carriers that they own and operate. Russia is a huge exporter of LNG. They have a fleet of LNG operators they, they, they control. Australia doesn't. Ask Australia how that's working out for them. It's not working out well for them. We should be involved in this. These are vessels of national security importance. And if it is national security, we use some American money to help offset the cost of building. I hear what people are saying right now. Sal, you want to tax people to do this. Yeah, but think about what this ship is. You build it in the United States. You crew it in the United States. You pay U.S. taxes. You move U.S. cargo. It, this money is being spent in the United States. It's not being spent overseas. It's not, you know, if you let that foreign company in, understand they're going to do to you what they're doing right now with diesel. Watch my video on diesel fuel. Why is there a shortage of diesel fuel up in New England and the Mid-Atlantic? Because those same energy traders are taking that diesel and shipping it overseas. That's the issue at play here. And the only way to get control over it is to stick an American flag and an American crew on it, an American company. And this way we have some oversight to ensure that we are providing for our citizens with necessary shipping. Do I think we need an entire fleet of LNG carriers with the American flag and only hauling American LNG? No. But we need this process to get started. This is a solution that solves the problem. It Does it make everybody happy? Nope. But I'll tell you what, it solves the issue, and it's a process of reform that we need to start thinking about going forward. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I know many of you didn't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't make everybody happy. But for those of you that are happy, hey, hit that thumbs up button. Leave a comment. Oh, I will get comments. I am sure I'll get comments. Share it across social media. Send it to Governor Sununu. I'm sure he would enjoy this video. And if you can, support the page. How do you do that? Well, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. You can hit that super thanks button down below and give directly to the page or become a patron of the page. Head on over to Patreon. You can become a monthly or yearly subscriber to the page. That allows me to bring these videos to you. Until our next episode, if I'm not killed by the Jones Act lobby or anti-Jones Act lobby or the LNG lobby or Governor Sununu shows up at my door. I don't know. But we will see. Until our next episode, Sal, sign it off.